In my last video, I took a first look at Amplify and got to know some of its features and how to navigate the site. But today I wanna to look at the scope and sequence and the actual units in Amplify to see what we're teaching and how much time I have, how quickly I need to go, and maybe see if I'm able to assign them or if I just kind of assign them by starting the lesson online. So my first step is, my first step is gonna to be to go to mybackpack.apsk12.org. And instead of immediately pulling up Amplify, I'm going to go to uh, Phoenix first, which is where our scope and sequence is. And if you haven't already, you should definitely favorite Phoenix 2.0 for staff so that it'll appear down here. So I'm going to open that. And it should already be set up so that it knows I'm an English language arts teacher for the sixth grade. So my scope and sequence should be on the main page. But if you haven't set that up yet, it's very simple to do on the left-hand side of your uh, dashboard. So it's right here, my scope and sequence. You might have to adjust this and this to see it, but this is also the download button and I've already downloaded it, but just so I can view it here. And just taking a look at it, it looks like it's all on one page and it's 6A, which I expected, and it tells me it's seven weeks and 26 lessons. And I know that I'm gonna spend the first week on getting to know you activities. So that's one week gone right there. So, cause there's no starting date here. So I just assume that that means that they're assuming it's starting from the first day of school, which never is realistic. So if I have um, 26 lessons over seven weeks, it would be, I'm not a math teacher, sorry. It would be 3.7 lessons a week. But in reality, I think it's gonna be more like six weeks. So. It's four plus lessons a week. So that means I'm going to have to do Amplify every single day, pretty much, because um, I'm going to also have to take into account star testing and any other things that might be going on that I have to do. Getting to know you activities, I, it's going to be tough, but it's definitely doable. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go to Amplify, which yesterday we bookmarked down here at the bottom or favorited, but just in case I can search it here. And again, you could right click it and do um, add to favorites. So once I get to the site, I wanna take a look at the actual unit one and just see what the topic is. So it took me back to where I was last, but I'm going to, if I was at the main page, then I would click on Dala Narrative. And okay, so over here we have some different, uh, there's a grammar pacing guide. I guess this might be if you wanted to integrate that grammar um, unit that's at the bottom, then you could do that. So I think these are, that's standards. Okay, they're telling you where these standards are in the lessons. So that's a good guide to have if I needed that for my lesson plan essay rubric, a lot of uh, accommodations now ask for a rubric, so that's good to know. A writing journal, it says to print. Solo text previews for dual language. Okay, blank exit tickets. All right, so I won't need that stuff because we're online, but lesson one was the one I looked at yesterday with the classroom principles, but um, it looks like it would be that you just clicked on the start class button to see what was going on. And I can't really do much without a class connected, but I do know that I'm gonna to have to pay really close attention to what my unit, um, what my course numbers are so that I make sure I pull up the right class at the right time, because obviously these numbers don't match periods. And I think that the two means that it's like quarter one and two, and that the four is like quarter three and four, three and four but I'm still not 100% sure about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at what other things are in 6A to just kind of get an idea. I feel like I could maybe skip a couple of lessons, but I really don't wanna start the year like that because if I miss something important, I'm concerned that I'll have to go back and do it and then it's gonna make me look unprepared, so I don't like that. All right, so the first five lessons teach foundational skills for uh, reading, writing, and thinking. 
So it sounds like these are just like super important because it's setting the foundation for the rest of the school year. All right, they even give you like, uh, I feel like this is on the lesson plan, like things that you need to think about, or maybe it's the lesson progression or the um, lesson internalization protocol that we use during our PLC meetings. And this is something that comes up like, what are some roadblocks or some things that are gonna need to be anticipated? Preparation, review these tips. Um, teacher and students using our blended program. Okay, so that must be if they have paper. Yeah, print editions, and we don't have that. Shared devices, we don't have that issue. One-to-one, -one, each student is able to log into his or her student account and access the lesson. Use the instructional guide as written to support the students in each activity. Okay, review each activity and practice projecting the images. Click the instructional guide icon to expand the teacher guide for each activity. All right, instructional guide icon. Okay, so I think this is why I purchased a second monitor because I think it's gonna be really tough to navigate, amplify, zoom, and my teacher script for this um, program. So on one screen, I can have what the student is seeing or my like navigation. And then on the other screen, I'll have my script and my unit guide that I looked at yesterday for the teacher guide, instructional guide, that's what it's called. Um, review the sample OTSCs in activity six, so you'll be prepared to support students during their first writing prompt. And I guess that's kind of a given that you should review the lessons before you teach them. Review the solo in order to be prepared to explain how solo assignments will work throughout the year and before the next lesson. And the getting get started subunit, you're looking, you're learning and refining the Amplify methodology for giving students feedback. Okay. Open spotlight and start with the spotlight wall. Okay, and then of course, how to determine differentiation. Okay. Okay, in the spotlight app, paste the excerpt on the wall, correct any spelling or mechanical errors, select the student, tag the skill, and post the excerpt. It's to model effective skill use and can motivate students to operate as a short piece operate as a short piece of skill instruction for the rest of the class. All right, I like that because I would prefer not to teach the race strategy. I would prefer to show great examples of a student using race and let the students, you know, their natural competitiveness come out to try to be as good as the student who I spotlighted. Okay, lesson objective. Students will be introduced to the foundational skill. All right, words to use. The focus standards, other standards, differentiation. You need to plan for differenti differentiation in advance. Consider adding your own notes about how you would implement each tip with specific students. The first two lessons provide little differentiation to allow for flexibility in planning, engaging baseline writing skills for your students. So that's good because we obviously don't know them yet and the star results are gonna help a lot with that. In activity four, um, we need to explain what a Zamboni is. And activity six, use over-the-shoulder conference guides to support individual needs. Okay, this is cool. So I can project the rules for sharing or the rules for writing. Okay, great. Um, I guess these are the... Oh, just some visual images, that's great. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit elementary, but I think they'll be okay. Vocabulary video for gruff. Oh, is this guy supposed to be gruff? Okay, let's see here. Um, yeah, this piece of work is what I like to call a piece of work. Um, okay, that's cute, I like that. The kids will enjoy that. It's always nice to have that little break in your lesson. All right, so now I understand lesson one, um, or sub subunit two, lesson one. And then I'm just gonna peek at this. It looks like it's pretty much the, well, they have a little bit of like a teacher advice. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same information. Okay, now let me try going to um, subunit three. Just take a peek at that. Just kind of want to get an idea of what I'm looking at here. All right, it would be super helpful to have this in book form 
and maybe I'm just old school, but I would prefer to have the book in my lap and check that out. Okay, so the full text version is in the library. So I guess if a student really likes what they're reading, they could read the whole thing. All right. Okay, cool. I like that you can click on the words to get a definition. And you can take notes or bookmark certain portions. That's cool, just by clicking. Emotion chart. Okay, so I'm wondering if this is like for ELLs or special needs or if it's something that they're going to use as like a key for something. Class timeline. All right, so I'm sure that they tell me when I'm supposed to show this stuff. It's not actually switching, that's weird. There we go. Let me try again. Maybe you just use it multiple times, like which is the character feeling or something. So I'd have to read the lesson more carefully, of course. Okay, so I'm still feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Because it looks great, but I don't feel necessarily prepared to teach it. Okay, so I would need to read all of this and make sure I'm timing myself and until I get used to the program. Okay, so I was told that the lessons are supposed to take 45 to 55 minutes. In fact, let me test that theory real quick and just see how long this lesson takes. All right, so if I click on the first part, it should give me the number of minutes. Zero minutes? Okay, that's not helpful. Maybe there aren't any. This is eight minutes, plus 15 is 23, I hope. 33, eight minutes, 51. Uh oh. 56. Oh, 60. I'm getting a little bit stressed because that's longer than my class. And then 20 minutes for solo. So, I mean, that's fine because I can give solo as homework, but that's just a lot. That's more time than I thought. So, I'm going to check out differentiation. Okay. So the grouping will be saved and applied to differentiated activities. So that's great. So if I move these kids once, I won't have to move them for every single class. That's, that's really cool. Um, but all right, that's, that's neat. I like that they have that. The poll. Okay. All right. So I definitely know how to navigate through um, Amplify and how to see the lessons I'm going to teach. I understand that I have to click start class to start the class and get them going. And then I just need to be so prepared that I know what's going to happen before I display it for period one on the first day I teach that subunit. But that is a lot of prep work, but it would be worth it if, you know, if it's really as effective as it seems.